Hello and welcome. In today's demonstration, I'm going to show you how Itential automates Cisco IOS software upgrades. I'll start out by giving you an overview of the automation in Itential. The automation flow will consist of form input, which gets transformed into the payload needed for the Itential prebuilt, followed by the Itential prebuilt for our IOS software upgrades, which includes file verification to confirm the image has been staged on the device, pre-checks to make sure the device is in an appropriate state before upgrading, boot marker configuration to set the boot image to the new OS, reload to apply the new image, and post checks to check on the state of the device after the upgrade. After the overview of our automation, I'll demo it on a live device. Okay, now that we've covered the agenda, I'll jump into the Itential Automation platform. On this screen, you can see a very simple workflow. There are two tasks. The first one is the transformation, where we perform data manipulation. This converts the input data into the payload needed to fit into the second task, the Itential Prebuilt. A parent workflow such as this is one where you'll want to add additional business logic and or Itential Prebuilts to achieve end-to-end -end automation. Diving into the Prebuilt, this is where you can see the steps required for the upgrade. The file verification, pre-checks, boot marker update, and so on, as we discussed in the slides earlier. Once the boot marker has updated to utilize the new image, then the reload occurs. The verification is uh, performed to make sure the device is back online, and then our post checks. The software upgrade prebuild is powered by a series of command templates and a configuration template. I'll pop into a few of the command templates to show you what they contain. The first one I'm clicking into is file verification. This ensures the image is there and that the version does not already contain the target upgrade version. The next one is the reload command template. It is used to execute the operational command to reload the device and accept the prompt to reload. Now let's look at a configuration template. These templates are used to model configuration. In this case, we'll update the boot marker to point to the new binary. Now that we understand what the automation is doing, let's move into our demo. First, I'm going into Configuration Manager so we can look at our device. Clicking on Load Configuration will fetch the configuration from the device. From the configuration view, we can see that the operating system is currently on version 17.3.4a. After we upgrade the OS, we'll expect it to change to 17.3.5. I'll use Operations Manager to start this automation. Just a reminder, there are several ways automations can be started, but for today, I'll use a user form. Here's where I can fill out the information needed for the upgrade. Selecting the new image, the location of the binary, and I'll leave auto approve set to false so I can see the audit along the way. Clicking into the job, I'll pull up the in-flight automation. This is where you can do a deep dive of the payloads and responses. Clicking into the potential pre-built that was used in our automation, I can see the command template steps. The first one outlined in blue here is the file verification. Clicking into the manual tasks, I'll wait for that audit to appear. Inside of here, I'll click on the work task, which will show me the information back. I can see that everything is marked green, which means that all my rules have passed as well as the commands themselves. We can see that the image is still currently on 17.3.4a, so it's ready for the upgrade procedure. Clicking back into Visualize, I can see where we are in the automation flow. Currently, we're sitting on the pre-checks. Jumping back into Manual Tasks, I'll select the Auto Work Tasks, and that will allow us to view the tasks as they're ready to acknowledge. The pre-checks have come back. They've also all passed. I'm going to go ahead and mark Success and continue the automation. Next up is the dry run of our configuration. In here, this is where our modeled configuration is coming back for the update boot marker statement. We're going to send that to the device, and the next step up should be the reload. We can see that we're sitting on the verify after reload step, which means the reload command is passed. Since we've begun to reload the device, we've lost management connectivity. Fortunately, I have console access to this device as well, so I'll click into the console screen and see what the device is doing. Based on the information coming back from the console view, we can see that the device is reaching the end of its reload. Jumping back into the Itential automation, I can take a look at the verify after reload step. It looks like it's back, which means we have management access again to the device. The show version command has passed, indicating that we're on the later version.
Following the verify after reload step is our post checks. This has also come back. Again, everything is marked green, showing success. The final task in our automation is the pre-post comparison. We want to establish the differences between the pre and the post. Fortunately, we have an option for a minimal diff. That minimal diff shows us just the changes between the pre-checks and the post-checks. In that view, we can easily identify that the software has upgraded from 17.3.4a to 17.3.4.5. The pre-post comparison was the final step in our automation, so now that this has been marked complete, I'll jump back into Configuration Manager, reload the configuration from here, and just confirm from this view that we're also set on the latest configuration. We can see that the OS is 17.3.5, so that completes our demonstration today. Thanks for watching.